In today's video topic, we'll discuss a very interesting concept about WordPress API's authentication and that is about JWT authentication, which stands for JSON Web Token. If I go back to browser, so as we know that so far inside this headless application, to validate our all WordPress APIs, we have used basic authentication. Now in place of basic authentication, I'll use this time JWT authentication. So first thing first, what is JWT? So JWT stands for JSON Web Token. So if I talk about its official website, so simply if I go to JWT.io, so once we go to its official documentation, so here we can find lots of resources about its structure, about its pattern and about its security parameters. But here, if I describe in a very short time about its working principle, so simply let's scroll down. So we can see that here we have an example of JW token value. So this token basically contains three segments we can see here like here we have the first segment, then here we have a dot here, then second segment, then again we have a dot here and here we have the third segment. So overall, the segment number one, segment number two, and segment number three basically contains and makes a JW token value. So this token we can pass where we need authentication. So if I talk about the segment importance, so first segment basically contains the algorithm type and type equals to JWT. So this is known as header. Inside second segment, we store the payload information. For example, like this token value at what time it will be expired, for which value, for which audience we have issued this token and much more information what we can store inside this payload. And inside this third segment, it basically usually contains the signature of this token value. So what is the purpose to use this token inside our APS authentication? So basically, it is highly secured in comparison of Base64 authentication. So here, inside this video topic, we'll discuss that what is the process to install JWT plugin inside WordPress application, what is the process to create this token value, and once we create this token, how to authenticate our APIs, what we have used inside React-based headless application. So overall, this complete concept we'll discuss inside this complete video. So first thing first, let's go back to browser and simply type JWT auth plugin WordPress. So simply, once we type this keyword, like we are finding the WordPress plugin of JLT authentication. So once we type, we can see lots of plugin which supports this authentication. So let's say that I'm going to install this first plugin. So what I will do simply copy this keyword, like the title of this plugin, just go inside WordPress application, go inside plugins, click on add new plugin. And here inside the search box, simply type that plugin title and automatically it will search inside WordPress repository and here we have the plugin. Click on install now and now we can see that the process of installation now started so we need to wait for a while. And successfully we can see that plugin is now installed so here we have button of activate so click on activate. And successfully, plugin is now activated. One more thing we can do here. So as we know that this time we are using this plugin for authentication. So let's deactivate this JSON basic authentication. Click on deactivate and plugin deactivated. So it means authentication what we are using inside this application is not going to work. So if I go, let's click on inspect, go to console tab. And here, if I reload this application and now we can see that here we have some error and that is of something called bad request. So in this time, in this situation, we have to use the another authentication to authenticate API so that this application is going to work with this authentication token value. So what we can do next, simply let's go to this plugin documentation, click on this plugin title it will simply redirect to WordPress official documentation. And here, if I scroll down, so we can see that here we have some constant and this constant actually we have to copy and paste inside WP config file of WordPress application. So what I will do, simply I will copy, open our WordPress application setup and inside WP config, simply we have to paste this line of code. So after copy, let's go back to our WordPress setup and here it is. 
I will open the loopy config.php and once we scroll into this file, simply let's paste here. So here we have to pass or we have to write a secret key, which is any value. So for the time being, this is my random like secret key value. So once we do this setting, let's go back to documentation again. And here again, copy this line of code. This is something which is going to enable our course. So simply let's copy and put here our second config value. So once we do all these things, save these changes, let's go back to again to the documentation. And here, now we can see that once plugin will be activated, it will create some namespace. So how to verify? Let's go here as we can see that plugin is successfully activated. So let's open our front end. And if I go to the JSON documentation of API, so base URL, then we have to type the loopy hyphen json and now we can see that inside this namespaces array after installation of that authentication package now here we have a new namespace called jlt hyphen auth forward slash v1 let's copy this namespace value let's open a duplicate tab and after this tolupi hyphen json if i type this namespace value and now we can see that this namespace is going to contain here we have some routes that is auth forward slash v1 auth forward slash v1 forward slash token and here v1 forward slash token forward slash validate it means to generate the token what we had seen here what we had seen here so this token we can generate by the help of this route called JOT auth forward slash v1 forward slash token. But before creating token value, we have to pass the username and the password of Tolupi app in panel. So what is the process to use this API route so that we can generate a token value? So let's go inside our React application, inside our headless application. And here, let's go inside SRC. I will go inside this components folder. Let's open post, post list JSX file. And here, I will go then inside this use effect. Let's create a function and I will simply call it as generate token value. And here, let's say generate JWT token value. And simply let's copy this function generate token value. And here, const function name. And inside this function, as we know that we have to call an API. So let's use try catch block. So catch here, error. And here, let's say finally, or we don't need finally this time, only try catch block. And here, let's say async block. And inside this, let's say const API response equals to await fetch api method and inside this what i will do i will copy this url let's go here put it here so after v1 forward slash token now inside this object we have to pass the username and password inside header sorry inside body so first it will use if i talk about the method type so if i go here let's open now we can see that it will use post request type so here what we can do method equals to post request type then inside headers it will be something called application not application here it will be content type content type and here application for slash json and right after headers let's pass body and here json dot not actually tag it's json dot stringify and here let's pass an object username and the username of wp admin that is admin and password is admin so once we pass all these data so automatically it is going to generate a token value let's copy this api response then here let's say const api data equals to await api response dot json and for the time being if i go and console dot log it's api data save these changes now this function what we have created automatically gets called by using this use effect method save these changes let's go here 
reload this page. So if I go into this console tab, now we can see that here we have a JSON response which is going to contain like the token value, user display name, user email and user nickname. And here this JSON response basically returned by the API call what we have applied here. So what next? So once we get the token value by using this token property, this token I will store into the local storage of this browser and by the help of that local storage and the token value, we'll pass this token value inside each of the API call of this headless application. So let's get started. So simply instead of console.log or let's say window dot local storage dot set item and here i'll call it as jwt auth underscore token and here it's api data dot token so simply now this time we have stored the token value into our local storage of browser so how to verify if i go here let's open something like this let's reload token generated and if i go into this application of this chrome browser so inside local storage here we have and now we can see that JW token and this is the token value. Now this token value we have to pass inside each of the API call what we have created inside headless application. Let's go here and one more thing. Also we have one more route inside this APS documentation to validate token what we have generated. So how to validate simply if I go here and inside this let's say that const validate jw token and inside this let's pass the token value and here let's say try block catch block error let's say console.log and error simply let's go here so what we can do let's say const api response or wait fetch method and if i copy the base url so here Let's copy after v1, we have to pass token and validate. So let's copy, pass here. So v1 token, then validate. And inside this second argument, let's pass an object here. And if I go, let's open its documentation. So we have to use post request type. So here, let's use method, which is equals to post request type inside headers. Inside headers we have to pass the key called authorization and inside this authorization we have to use bearer bearer space and the token value so we generated and let's use async function block so we have generated token value and stored inside this local storage so how to get that value so simply concatenate window dot local storage get item get item and the key we have stored called JWT underscore token. This is the key. So once we save that, let's go and print this value. So const API data await API response dot JSON. So console dot log. And here if I pass API data, so simply, and let's say that instead of getting this value, if I pass the token value of here let's copy this function name and this function i will use inside this generate token value method so here let's pass it here and what we can do let's api data dot token and here let's say await so simply if i save these changes let's go here let's reload go to console tab now we can see that once we pass our token value to our second API call, now we can see that in return we are getting JOT auth valid token. So in case of invalid, it will return something called invalid token. So successfully now here we have valid token. So once we get valid token, what next? Let's go first inside this fetch WordPress post, click on it, go inside this API call because this time we can see we have some error. So that is something called bad request like here we can see bad request so that's why the post is not loading so what we can do here inside this authorization instead of using basic authentication it will be error space and the token value and that token value we can get from window local storage 
dot get item and here it will be something charity underscore token so once you pass this value save these changes if i go and now you can see that successfully all the posts now successfully loaded inside this headless application so in the same pattern we have to use the same logic same concept like window dot local storage dot get item to each and every api call what we have used inside this headless application so successfully now we have completed this entire course of this headless application in a very interesting way here we have seen the amazing concept of wordpress apis endpoints and its parameter that how to use how to understand and how to consume inside react based headless application so friends i hope that this course was really really very amazing and informative so please give us a thumbs up to like this course subscribe to this channel now let's meet to our next amazing course so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day